Hey everybody, my name is Pam. Welcome to my channel. I apologize if I look like I've been punched in the face or, you know, for the arm gloves. I got into some poison ivy the other day and I have been miserable since. <laughs> so getting better, I'm um, definitely not as bad. I mean, I was really swollen and stuff. It was really bad. Anyways, back to my point. If you follow me for any measure of time, you know that I like to do join as you go squares for my crochet temperature blanket. I really enjoy them because they work up relatively fast and you just one square a day. It's part of my morning routine and the blankets always turn out so absolutely beautiful. So this is my 2022 mini granny square blanket. I'm not done yet, but I'm still working on my 2023 French square blanket. And that blanket's turning out lovely. Now you'll notice all of these blankets, it's just one color per day. I personally actually just pick the high. I pick the highest temperature of every day that is the temperature I use. However, next year I wanted to challenge myself yet a little bit more, kind of like I did with my French square this year. For 2024, I am making dual tone squares. So I will be doing both the high and the low temperature. Let me introduce you to the mini bloom square. I'm really excited about this. This is a, a pattern that was very much in development. In fact, I want to say I've probably made collectively about 30 squares before I finally settled on this design. Um, when I started to kind of come up with this design, this was like my original prototype. And honestly, I really love them in single color. So if you want to do these in just one color, go for it because it looks great in single colors. But I needed to fine tune it more. So I fine tuned it and then I fine tuned it and then I fine tuned it and finally settled on this. So this is the mini bloom square. It's got a beautiful reverse puff stitch edge, which I think is stunning. Now it looks kind of gaudy on the swatch, but I think on the finished blanket, it's going to look phenomenal. I just don't have a finished blanket to show you yet because I'm going to be starting this project myself at the turn of the year. So yes, I know I'm posting this video in September. I'm preparing accordingly and you should too. If you want to do a temperature blanket, if you want to set yourself up for the most success, prep now. <laughs> Go and understand you don't have to do a start of the year to the end of the year blanket, but that's what I prefer. You can do a birthday to birthday, anniversary to anniversary, a random day to a random day whatever you feel like doing. But personally, I start the start of the year, I end the end of the year, and then I do my border. I like to be prepared. So I make sure about this time of year, September, October, maybe into November, I plan out what my color palette's gonna be, how I'm gonna divide up the temperatures. I usually stick to, I'm really enjoying doing a dozen colors per blanket. I design and pick out my square. If you're interested in purchasing this square pattern written out with along with a log and everything that goes with it, you can check out the link to my Etsy shop in the description box below. Below. It is the mini bloom square pattern. So today I'm going to show you how to make the square, how to join it on one side, which you would do working the whole first row would be one-sided joins. And then when you start your next row, it's also a one-sided joint under your first square, but then you start the two-sided joints. So I will be showing you how to do a single square, which really you're only doing one if you're doing a temperature blanket. Then I'll show you how to join on one side and then how to join on two sides. And finally, I'll show you how to make the border. So let's get started. So to get started, you're going to need worsted weight yarn, you know, in whatever colors you're, you're planning on using for your blanket and an H hook. This is a five millimeter Susan Bates inline H hook. And I really prefer the inline hook specifically for these squares and this overall project, especially when you get to the border and you'll see why. So first I'm gonna show you how just to do a plain basic square. And I apologize for the weird glove-like things. I have really bad poison ivy and I gooed myself up really well. And I don't wanna goo everything else, just my arms. So, so to get started, make a basic slip knot. I'm gonna show you how to do this in two colors, but you can do this in just one color if you prefer. You know, it's up to you. So like when I'm doing these squares, I'm going to be doing low temperature inside, high temperature outside, but you could literally just make this all one color if you want. I'm going to do the two colors. So start with a chain four and then slip stitch to the first chain you made to form a ring. Now chain one, and we're going to do a double crochet two together cluster. So we're going to do the first half of a double crochet into the ring and another first half of a double crochet into the ring where you insert your hook, drop a loop and yarn over, pull through just two. There are now three loops on your hook yarn over, pull through all three. There's the double crochet two together cluster. Then you're gonna chain three, and now we're going to do double crochet three together clusters. So yarn over, insert your hook into the ring, drop a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two, there's the first half of one. Yarn over, go into the ring, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, there's the first half of two. Yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, there's the first half of three. Now you've got four on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all. Repeat that, chain three, and do a um, double crochet three together cluster. So there's one, two, three, cluster. Sorry, my yarn doesn't want to come out nicely. Chain three again, and again, double crochet three together cluster. One, two, the first half of three double crochets, then yarn over, pull through all four loops. Chain three, and join to the top of your double crochet two together cluster. Now the reason we did two at the beginning is if you look, that chain one almost kind of makes it look like a three. So that's why I did what I did. If that bothers you for some reason, just make that one a three as well. But I think this looks nice and balanced. Now at this point, if you're going to continue using the same color, you're going to slip stitch into this space right here and chain one to begin the next row. However, I am changing colors. Boop. And I think we're going to do purple with the green. So just cut and tie. Let me fish in that tail. All right. Fished in the tail using my favorite finishing needle. I'm going to switch to purple. We're going to join with a single crochet. At least that's how I usually do it. So I'm going to join with a single crochet. Each of these spaces are going to get five single crochets. So that's, this is two, three, four, five single crochet into that space. So if you would have kept the same color, you would have done a slip stitch over, chain one, and then five single crochet. After the five single crochet, chain one, and then going into this next chain three space, we're going to do five more single crochet. Chain one, repeat that again. Chain one, and one more time. Tail in the way. Five, chain one, and then join to the very first single crochet. Just like that. Now next, we're going to start round three by doing a chain three. Chain three counts as our first double crochet and a chain one. So when we come back around to join, we're gonna be joining to that second double crochet, second chain. <laughs> we're going to be doing a single crochet. We're gonna skip two stitches and single crochet. However, sometimes one of these stitches likes to get buried. So if it makes it easier for you, just remember, just pick basically whichever one looks like the middle one and just single crochet in there. So skip two, single crochet, chain one, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the next chain one space. That chain one space is way over here. So way over there, go right into doing a two double crochets, one, two, right into that chain one space there, chain two, and do two more double crochets in that same space. Whoops. Now we're going to chain one again and whoopsies chain one skip two and single crochet and again see like these get kind of buried so it's hard to see so this one is technically the middle one because technically this loop goes to that single crochet that goes to that one 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 and that's the chain so that can be confusing so just pick the middle one and go into the middle with a single crochet chain one now going right into this chain one space way over here with two double crochet. Chain two, whoop, whoop, and two more double crochet. If you noticed, these form your corners. So when the pattern says work up to, you know, whatever corner, it means get to the point where you're about to start this corner, these series of stitches. So chain one, go into the middle with a single crochet chain one 
and then again we're doing another corner so into this chain one space way over here we're going to do two double crochets chain two and then two double crochets again chain one single crochet into the middle here chain one again and we're working the final corner so remember this counts as our first double crochet so into this space we're going to do two double crochet chain two and then only one double crochet because the original first two chains count as the first stitch so we're going to join to that second chain if you want this to be a little more defined, you could also probably just join to this gap in general, just whoop, just like that, and you'll have a little bit more of a defined stitch, which I think looks nice. And that's all you have to do for the square, so then we just cut and tie. So then all I have to do is fish in my tails, I'll just fish this in like so. Now I will say I've noticed when I'm making this pattern that when I'm working this tail, this very last one, it's best to go back towards your double crochets than to go towards the single crochet because otherwise it has a tendency to make your square a little wonky. I don't know why, but it also kind of works out because you can just go boop. That's how you do a single square. Now for the next square, we're going to be doing a join on one side. So the pattern is exactly the same until you get to the last row. So for this one, I'm going to be doing chain four, slip stitch to the first chain with I'm going to do gray for the inside color. Chain one, do a double crochet, two together cluster. Chain three, whoopsies. And we're doing a double crochet, three together cluster. One, two, three. Chain three. Another double crochet, three together cluster. This is driving me nuts. <laughs> Two, three, whoops. Chain three, and another double crochet, three together cluster. Two, three, one, two, three. And then slip stitch to the top of the two cluster to join. And then I'll be cutting and tying this color off. So this is going to work up the same. Join your new color to one of these chain spaces with a single crochet. And just do five single crochet, chain one, into each of these gaps. So one, two, three, four. Wait, there's five there. Whoops. It's hiding there. One, two, three, four, five. Chain one. One, two, three, four, five. Chain one. Three, four, five. Chain one. Last five. All right, now we're ready to do a one-sided join. So you should have, you should be here with me starting row three. Now for the instructions on the pattern, it says to work up until you get to where you're about to start your third corner. Chain three. This is not your first corner, by the way. It's only just part of a corner, but it's not your first full corner. So I guess that's kind of an important note. Skip two stitches single crochet, chain one, into this chain one space we're going to do our first full corner, so two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain one, single crochet in the middle of the side, chain one, do your next corner into this next space, which is at the corner of these little leaves by the way, so two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. There's our second full corner. Chain one, single crochet in the middle of the side, chain one. Now we're about to start our third corner and this is where you start to join if you're doing a one-sided join. So for the one-sided join, you're going to do the first half of the corner, which is the 
at least the first two double crochets. You're going to double crochet two times into the corner for the third corner, the third full corner, I should say. Now grab your square, whichever side you're going to join to, line it up. Now mind you, you're going to be joining to this corner gap, the gap on this side and this side of the single crochet and this other corner. And every time you join, you're going to be inserting your hook front to back into the adjacent square. So this is the working square, this is going to be the adjacent square. So we're going to line it up to where we want to join, insert our hook front to back, yarn over, and do a slip stitch. And then chain one, and finish our two double crochets for this corner. Then we're going to replace this next chain one with a simple slip stitch to the next corresponding place in the square. So just slip stitch, inserting your hook front to back in this gap right next to the single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet into our working square in the middle of the side. And replace the next chain one with another slip stitch on the other side of the single crochet, inserting our hook front to back, like so. Now we're ready to start our, or I should say complete, our final corner because that chain two counts as part of it. So yarn over, insert your hook into this space down here, don't pick up the tail, <laughs> and do two double crochets. It feels weird and awkward, but it'll work out. And then instead of a chain two, we're replacing one of those chains with a slip stitch to this corresponding corner. So insert your hook front to back, yarn over and slip stitch, chain one, and then do your last double crochet into that space here and just join with a slip stitch. And that's how you do a one-sided join. So cut, tie, thread in your tails. Now we'll take this time while I'm threading in the tails to tell you that if you're doing a temperature blanket, the dimensions of the temperature blanket are 16 squares by 23 squares. That means that when you do, the only square where you're doing an entire square and it's just the square <laughs> is going to be the first square. Every other square is going to have some kind of a join. So you're going to, your entire first row of squares are going to be a one-sided join, which is really nice because it gives you time to get familiar with joining and get comfortable with joining as you go, doing just having to do just one side of a join each time. However, once you move on to the next row, your every subsequent row is always going to start with a one-sided join underneath the very first square of the row previously. That sounds confusing, so let me clarify. If this was my very first square, this would be the second square, 16 of these doing a one-sided join each time, and then when you're ready to start the next row, you're doing a one-sided join here as well to start the next row. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to join another one here. So again, you'll be doing the 16 blocks, doing a one-sided join. You just keep going here, then here, then here, and just keep doing that until you're ready to start row, the second row of blocks, which would be on day, I guess, 17. Um, and you would do a one-sided join underneath here, like I'm about to show you. The third corner is where I start to join on the one-sided join. So when I'm about to start my third corner, there's my first corner, second corner, the third corner, I'm going to start by putting the two double crochets into the third corner. And then I'm going to line it up where I want it. In this case, it's going here. So I'm going to start joining here, not here, or I'm going to end up with it going like this. <laughs> so make sure you're mindful. Like it helps to actually just hold the square where you want it to see where you're going to join. And especially once you start doing two sided joins, because you usually start on the bottom right side of the a square above and work your way over like that. So hold it underneath, line it up. Oh, yep. That goes there and do a slip stitch to the adjacent square chain one and finish that corner with two double crochets. Now it's like flopping everywhere. <laughs> so the next space is this chain space right here next to the single crochet. We're going to insert our hook front to back there, yarn over, slip stitch. And then going into the middle here, I'm going to do a single crochet because that slip stitch kind of replaced my chain one. And likewise, normally I would be doing a chain one after the single crochet. I'm going to replace it with a slip stitch to the adjacent square, which is on the other side of this single crochet, inserting my hook front to back, yarn over, slip stitch. Now we're going to start the final corner, or I should say complete the final corner, 
by doing our two double crochets. There's one. There's two. We're going to slip stitch to the adjacent corner. Chain one. Do one more double crochet into that space. That finishes the corner so then we can just slip stitch to join. Let me fish in these tails. And yes, I'm only slipping these in one direction. When I make my blankets, I usually do two. So um, the reason I'm doing one is because this is just a swatch, so I don't really care. In fact, I don't even know why I'm threading in the tails if I don't really care. But I am because, I don't know, because I am. So, so there is joining beneath. So now the tricky part. Let me show you how to join on two sides. Chain three. Now, we're going to single crochet to the middle of the side. Whoop. Chain one and work our first full corner. So the two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Now we're going to do this side, so whoops, chain one, single crochet to the center, chain one. Now we're going to, when we're about to start our second corner is when we're going to start to join because this is how we're joining. See, second full corner is where we begin to join. The third corner gets joined here and here. The fourth corner gets joined here. So put your first two double crochets into the next chain one space. Again, it helps to hold your square up to see where it goes. Insert your hook front to back into the corner that that's going to get joined to, which is right here. So slip stitch, chain one, that counts as your chain two, and finish your corner with two more double crochets. All right. Now again, we're going to be replacing the chain ones with slip stitches to the corresponding spaces on either side of this single crochet. So go into this space here next to the single crochet, front to back, with a slip stitch, find the middle of the side here and single crochet. And then again, replace the chain one with a slip stitch to the next corresponding space. Now we're ready to start the inside corner. So start with your first two double crochets. This is probably the most awkward part, but it's not too bad, I promise. And now instead of doing a slip stitch chain one, we're doing a slip stitch here into this corner space and a slip stitch here into this corner space. Resist the urge to work into the diagonal square. Don't do that. Slip stitch front to back into the bottom of the square above and into the top of the square to the left. Now, I always tend to turn my work because it makes it easier for me to work. This is where it gets awkward because then you have to yarn over and finish off your corner with two double crochets. So it feels weird, but after you do the first half of the double crochet, it gets manageable, see? So do your two double crochets there. Now, just like with the one side of join, again, we're replacing these single, uh, these chains with slip stitches on either side of the single crochet. So after you've finished your corner, sorry, I'm trying to get the tail out of the way, slip stitch to this corresponding side, single crochet to the center here, in your working square. Weep. So we just did the single crochet here. Now we're going to slip stitch into the adjacent square to join. Weep. Now we're going to start our final corner. So yarn over, insert your hook into this last space over here. Do two double crochets. Now we're going to slip stitch into the last corner. chain one and one more double crochet and that's it we'll slip stitch cut and tie where's the gap there it is whoop slip stitch cut and lose your finishing needle there it is and tie and that's how you do a two-sided join with this square now this square is a little more cumbersome than my other squares because it's joined on each side in four places, like this has um, one, two, three, four points of contact, one, two, three, four points of contact, which 
with my previous squares there were only three and three is more than enough but with just the nature of this design it ended up being four which is fine because it actually makes for a tighter connection it does make it a little more awkward to work but it's not too bad I don't think and like I said you'll be doing at least 16 one-sided joins you'll do your first square and then the remaining 15 of the first row with a one-sided join and then the first one of the next row with a one-sided join so by the time you start doing two-sided joins you will have made 17 squares when you're getting ready to do your two-sided joins so try not to let it intimidate you you'll have plenty of practice before you get to the point where you need to join you can see it's it's very 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 sturdy and it will, as the blanket gets worn, it will stretch and you'll see more clear, de clearly defined spaces. Now let me show you how to do the border because the border is really easy. To be different, I'm going to do my border in blue. So I'm gonna start in a corner and join to a corner with a single crochet. And in fact, into this corner and into every corner, you're just gonna put four single crochets. Okay, and then all you're gonna do is work around the, the blanket, which this is just a swatch, but on the blanket, the spaces between um, the space here, 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 here. So all of the corners of each square and the side spaces where you do your normal joins are going to get two single crochets. So into this space, two single crochets. Into the next space, two single crochets. into the next space, two single crochets. Try not to make your single crochets too tight into this next corner. Notice I'm going from one corner square to the next corner square. Don't skip them <laughs> and do not work in between them, which is kind of difficult to do in this pattern because of the way they're joined, but don't work like between the squares, just work into the squares. So into this next space, two single crochet. If you tend to crochet really tight, you might end up with puckering, so be careful. Into the corner, we're gonna put four single crochet. Now we're going on down the other side. Be careful you don't work between your two doubles. You go into the other side of the two double crochets with two single crochets. And then the other side of the single crochet with two single crochets. The other side of the two doubles into this corner with two single crochets then into this corner two single crochets and you're doing this down the whole length of the blanket it's really it's nice and mindless I like it because counting to do is something I can counting to do is something I can do obviously not counting to two is something I can usually do <laughs> while talking four single crochets into the corner two down the sides And what's awesome is that the next row is a little more involved, but it looks really pretty and it's actually really simple. And it too is pretty mindless because you're not counting above two. It's kind of awesome. So just two single crochets into each of these spaces. Try not to over tighten your stitches and then do four single crochets into each corner. If you think yours is curling up too much, which mine, once I stretch it, it's fine. But if you think yours is too curly, you can put five into the corners and it'll still work out just fine even with this next row. So that's something you can do too. Hey, mommy. Hey, buddy. And then... Just two into each of the gaps, making sure you don't work between the squares, like don't work into that gap. Once you're back to where you started, join to your first single crochet. Now, this is the interesting part. If you're familiar with a puff stitch, this will be really easy for you. This is like a merge between a puff stitch and a reverse single crochet, and I think it looks really cool, really finished on both sides. It starts with doing a chain two and then working into the same stitch that you started in, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, 
draw up a loop. You're doing it just twice. That's all you need, I think, for a nice size puff. If you want super puffs, you can do three. I'm just doing two. Yarn over, pull through everything, and chain one. There's our puff. But now we're going to go back two stitches. This is confusing, actually, because this stitch is this one. It's been joined to that one, so that one doesn't count. But skip a stitch, go to the next stitch, yarn over, and reaching back, go into this Skip a stitch and go into the next, going backwards. Draw up a loop, nice and high. Yarn over, do it again, draw up a loop. Yarn over, pull through everything and chain one. Now skip a stitch and going into the next space, yarn over. Go into there, draw up a loop, yarn over, go back in, draw up another loop. Yarn over, pull through everything chain one. This is why I really appreciate the inline hook because if I use a tapered hook, I tend to get snagged when doing this, um, any kind of puff stitch generally. So yarn over, skip a stitch. We're going backwards because it's like a reverse stitch. It's like a crab stitch. So yarn over, skip a stitch going backwards, going into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up another loop, yarn over, pull through everything and chain one to secure. Skip a stitch, Yarn over, go into the next one, draw up a loop, yarn over, go into the next one, or the same one again. Yarn over, pull through everything, chain one to secure. Yarn over, skip a stitch, going into the next one, draw up a loop, yarn over, go into the same space and draw up another loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and chain one to secure. And you just keep doing that. Skip a stitch between each one and see, look, one, two, chain. Skip one, and around the corners it's the same thing. One, two, chain. Skip one. So see, like, one, two, chain. You can do this pretty mindlessly. What, buddy? Can I paint? Um, ask... Uh, tall friend to get you a paint palette with some paints and yes you can paint one two yarn over pull through everything chain one so skip a chain yarn over go into the space draw up a loop like to pull it nice and high so I have a ne decent sized puff but not too high do it again yarn over pull through everything and then chain one to secure the puff so you just keep doing that going around What, buddy? He's getting it. Go wait for Tallfern. I know. Go wait for Tallfern to come back. One. Two. And then again, skip one. Skip one. Skip a stitch. This feels really weird. Kind of like when you first do a reverse single crochet. This feels just, if not a little bit, <laughs> substantially weirder. But it's also pretty easy, and especially, in my opinion, with an inline hook. Because it glides right through all those loops effortlessly. Doesn't require a whole lot of counting, a whole lot of brain power, so that's <laughs> honestly borders are usually intimidating for me, so I like to keep my borders really simple because you know, when I'm done the project at the end of the year, I don't want my border to feel like such a project that it's I'm never going to get it done and then my blanket sits only kind of finished. So this becomes one of those projects that I can kind of just listen to. An audio teaching or something and can't tell you how many times I've listened to movies instead of watching movies. <laughs> you just skip a stitch going backwards and work a puff stitch. Draw up a loop, yarn over, 
So yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up a loop, pull through everything, chain one, skip a stitch, repeat. I'll show you what the other side looks like when we're done, and I'll show you how to finish too. Because we're just about back to where we started. So we're gonna do one in here, and again. Now we've done our chain one, and you'll notice there's only one stitch left because that's the final stitch. If you see two there, it's possible that you, when you first started, that you didn't, that you worked into what would technically be the next stitch instead of skipping one because it can be kind of confusing. And you know what? It doesn't matter because I ended up doing that with this one, and it still turned out just fine. So don't worry about it if you have a weird oddball number of stitches. What I like to do, though, is turn my work around and slip stitch to the same starting stitch so see where my puff is going into i like to slip stitch on the back side of the work cut leaving a tail and tie off your yarn so that's that's it doesn't that look beautiful i love that like i said if you don't like um if you think your corners are curling up too much um you can put five stitches there instead of four it still works out because with four corners you still end up with an even number and it still works out so so front and back looks very similar and both look really ornate and pretty and just like that my swatch turned colors <laughs> i've got two swatches now so that's how you make it um i'm really excited about doing this project you can follow me on tiktok and instagram if you'd like my handle is pamela Amy. those links will be in the description box below too if you want to see my progress because i post regular updates on all of my temperature blanket progress so you can actually go and find updates on my 2022 mini granny square blanket my 2023 French square blanket, and then soon coming my 2024 mini bloom square blankets that I will be making. And this will be my first year doing two colors. So I'm really excited and also a little nervous because to me, that's like a next level commitment. But I feel like these squares still don't take very long to do and should be very manageable because it really truly is ingrained into my morning routine at this point. So I'm really excited about that. I hope you join me. If you are going to join me on the crochet journey of making a temperature blanket, let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know your handle if you plan on posting updates because I love following people who do those kinds of things. Like temperature blankets are entire commitments and a lot of people look at them like, well, that's so stupid. It's just the temperature. It's not about the temperature. It's about having an external source telling you what colors you pick each day. And so you're completely out of control on what the colors are, which to me is kind of exciting because if I were to pick the colors every day, it would probably turn out awful and way too consistent and just, I can't rely on myself to be good at that. <laughs> so it's nice to have an external source, but it's also about the commitment. There is a level of commitment when you make an entire blanket. Like I have never made a crochet blanket before prior to 2022 making my first temperature blanket. And granted my mini granny square blanket is like a lap blanket, but it's my first blanket and I'm so proud of it. And all it took me was like five minutes a day. My French square blanket, about seven minutes a day. I'm thinking this square will be about seven or eight minutes a day as well. You know what, sometimes I'm not in the mood to do it and that's okay because once I get started, I get excited to finish. I know it's gonna be less than 10 minutes and I'm done. And in the end, I wind up with a beautiful blanket that I am absolutely proud of and never in a million years would have thought I would have done because I am really bad at committing to things. So, so sorry for all the excessive ramblings. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments section or if you're having concerns or issues or anything, you can also email me at pam at forgoodnesskeepsakes.com. I look forward to embarking on this crochet journey with a lot of you starting in 2024. Set an alarm reminder to get your yarn and to start your project because it's too easy to get sucked into the new year and then finally coming down out of all the holiday chaos to just be like oh snap it's like January 17th and I forgot I was supposed to start my blanket so set an alarm and make sure you have yourself ready in an easily accessible place so thank you so so much for watching thank you for your support um, again you can check out that pattern in Etsy the link will be in the description box below once that's ready thank you so much for being here and for putting up with my garbage <laughs> and have a blessed day.